Good morning, friends. We have obviously been talking about humility all throughout this past week's devotions based on our Lord's explanation that unless we become humble like children, we will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And so we've explored what that humility means in terms of salvation, how humility is an integral part of saving faith itself, and how that genuine saving faith by God's grace supernaturally leads to a changed life. And so as we close out the week, I'd like to take you to Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13, to see that continued humility harmonizes with everything else we're supposed to be as citizens of the kingdom. We read, we or we, sorry, we read, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Now, these are but two verses of a much longer section, which describes how God's people uh, coming together in love produces genuine unity in Christ. And so I absolutely encourage you to read the context of these few verses. But for right now, let's just consider what we have here so far. Because the Apostle Paul directs us to put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And so there's the humility we've been talking about, and it is one of several character traits or character qualities that the apostle is directing us to. But even as we consider this whole group of qualities, we see how interconnected and interrelated they are. Can you imagine having a truly compassionate heart without humility? I really don't think so, because the opposite of humility, of course, is pride, and pride does not lead us toward compassion, does it? Pride doesn't take the other person into account, but humility does, and therefore it can lead us to compassion, because humility puts the other person before oneself. It's the same thing with kindness, meekness, and and patience. Can Can a kind person be kind for any meaningful length of time without patience? Can we maintain our humility without an attitude of meekness, without a disposition toward gentleness and self control? Of course not. So, As we consider all these qualities that we are called to put on, and the idea of putting on these qualities just reminds us of the fact that we are to put on Christ, and Christ is all of these things in perfection. So he's telling us to draw all the closer to who Christ is and, and put him on because our life is fully in him. But as we consider all these things, Paul goes on to describe the actions uh, that come out of them, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. And clearly Paul is talking about the attitudes we have toward one another within the church, within the body of Christ, in the kingdom of God, and the result of those attitudes in what we're willing to do with each other, which is that we are, or at least we, we should be and really must be, willing to bear with one another and, of course, forgive one another. And let's not let's not miss one of the underlying uh, implications here, uh, because in order to bear with a person, well, that person has got to be causing you some sort of grief, right? Because if everything is hunky dory, if there's no conflicts of any sort, no personality clashes, no misunderstandings, no miscommunications, if there's no source of frustration or friction in that relationship, then there's no reason to bear with one another. And so the command to bear with one another informs us of the of one of the realities within the church, which is that we're going to get on each other's nerves at times. We are going to get frustrated with each other. We are going to get upset with one another. But instead of throwing in the towel and bolting, we are called to bear with one another. And that humility we've been talking about is central to this. Because what is the thought that generally pushes us over the edge to the, to get to the point where we just want to leave? Is it not basically the idea of, I don't have to put up with this? You can't expect me to put up with this? And is that not fundamentally a prideful notion? I don't deserve to have to deal with this. You have no right to make me endure this. Rather, I, I have the right to be free from such things and not have to go through such things. These thoughts and, and all the, the similar thoughts that would, that would make us want to pick up our ball and, and take it and go home, it, they all come back essentially to pride. But if we are humble, if we are humble, we will endure because humility does not demand one's rights, real or perceived. 
does not demand those rights be maintained as the first priority. Humility is willing to consider that other person, the person who is possibly causing the disturbance, the friction, whatever the grievance might be. Humility considers that person and loves that person more than it loves your own rights and demands and expectations, especially in terms of forgiveness, because we bear with one another. We legitimately have to, at times, simply put up with one another for the purpose of forgiving one another. We are called to act in humility and meekness and kindness and compassion toward one another for the sake of forgiveness, of reconciliation, of ultimate unity in Christ in the body of the church. Because the person we are truly humbling ourselves before isn't that other person in the church. It's Christ himself. And that's why Paul reminds us that we must be willing to forgive one another, even as the Lord has forgiven you. When we forgive one another, we are actually submitting to Christ. Because since he forgave us, how can we then stand up and say, I will not forgive them? And we we do make the objection sometimes, don't we? We say, we, we hear this, this command to forgive. And we say, wait, you don't realize what they did to me. You don't realize how much grief they caused me. You want me to just forgive them after the depth of pain and angst they've caused? And I can sympathize with the pain. I can sympathize with the difficulty of the notion of forgiving that person. But when it comes right down to it, the only response we can make to to that actual objection is this. Do you not realize how much pain and angst and grief Jesus bore on your behalf in order to forgive you. Because no matter what one Christian might do to another or, or, or how much any given unbeliever might do to us, could what they did ever be considered even in the same category as the wrath of God himself? Because that's what our sins brought on Jesus. It was for the sake of our sin that Jesus bore the wrath of God, the very essence of hell, poured out on him as he hung on that cross, and yet he forgives us. And so we must be willing to forgive others even as he forgave us because nothing that anyone else on this earth could do to us can compare to what our sin did to Christ, and yet he forgives. And it takes humility. It takes humility, deep humility, to truly understand and fully embrace this truth. It takes submission to Christ, both to understand and acknowledge this truth, but then submission and humility to then go on to rely upon him for the strength to actually do it. Because the point of this isn't that we are called to forgive because Christ forgave us, therefore go and do it in your own power. No, not at all. We must seek the Lord, beseech him. We must pray and ask him, please, dear father, grant to me the strength in my spirit, the compassion in my heart, and the resolve in my mind to actually forgive this person. Father God, in my emotions, I hate what they've done. I am hurt. I am feeling bitterness Please, Father, overwhelm those sinful responses with your righteousness and help me to forgive them. Help me to bear them no ill and even, Lord, help us to reconcile together in the name of Jesus Christ. Because, friends, that simply isn't something we have the power to do in our own strength. But we can in the power of the one who strengthens us. But we've got to submit to these truths first, that we must have forgiving hearts bearing with one another, that in God's kingdom, it's not acceptable to let pride dominate such that we split when there's conflict rather than bearing with one another long enough to make reconciliation through forgiveness. We must be humble, submitting ourselves to the Lord first and foremost, and relying fully on his strength to not put ourselves first among his people to not think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but rather to think of, care for, and prioritize that other person before ourselves, looking to minister to one another, bear with one another, forgive one another, and so be united with one another all the more intimately and deeply and tightly in Jesus Christ our Lord. May these truths draw us into an ever tighter bond as brothers and sisters in Christ, as his church. I love you guys. Please have a good and godly day. And Lord willing, I'll see you Sunday.